As we start off a new session up here in Albany, uh, both houses are firmly in the hands of the Democrats. But there are Republicans to be found. There's no question about it. They've got some interesting concepts for everybody, too, as we start off a new session. Carl Brabenek is one of those who was re-elected this go-around. 98th District is what he represents in the uh, uh, Orange and Rock Lend area. It's good to have you with us, Carl. It's great to be Welcome. here. Great to be here. Thank the, you. Th things have, have changed a little bit, not, not from the assembly standpoint so much, but mm -hmm. from the uh, senatorial standpoint. Yes. Is that having any bearing, any uh, second thoughts for you on what you can accomplish this year? Well, you know, um, I was elected uh, by over 10,000 votes in my district. Um, they people, want you here. They want me they here. They want you here. They like what I'm fighting for. And, and for the past four years, I've been fighting for property tax reform, uh, especially the school property tax, uh, which is just outrageous. And that's what's driving people out of New York State. We need to fix that problem here. And I've, I've actually had a bill that I've introduced uh, year after year um, to try to get that solved, which could potentially uh, bring down somebody's taxes 70 to 75 percent their annual Whoa. property tax bill. All right, well, break, so, break it to me gently. What, yes. What, what is the idea, and it sounds like it's got to be very popular with a lot of people. Uh, certainly. Um, basically, it, it was an idea that uh, was brought up uh, probably about 10 years ago or so. And uh, it was brought up by the Senate Republicans. It passed the Senate and never got brought up in the Assembly. When I became an Assemblyman, I reintroduced that bill. And basically what it does, it gives an optional, um, an option, or an option to school districts, the voters of a school district, to opt out of the property tax system, have the state take over the funding completely of schools. And what would, there's, it's a multifaceted approach where, you know, we would have to fund a separate, um, uh, sort of a lockbox fund for education. Okay. Um, Which and would be that funded from what? That would be funded from the lottery, the gambling revenues. Um, you know, any we would try to find revenues in the budget that wouldn't affect the taxpayer to put into that fund. Hmm. Um, also, um, what would happen or what would occur is um, it would it would be through a period of five years. So there's a five year period that you would go into it and it would go down 20% per year. So this I think would help out a lot of small businesses, definitely a lot of residents um, in the state to actually live here, retire here, stay here, you know. So it's, a, it's definitely a, um, an option that, that we can look at and you know something that we can expand upon to to see how we can fight this property tax issue. So uh, effectively, you would be taking it more from the general fund. Correct. I mean, my in bits and pieces. Yes, my uh, we have a hundred sixty-seven billion dollar budget, and uh, probably about ten percent of that. Uh, if you take ten percent of that, you could fund all the school districts in New York State if everybody opted into the system. Okay. So um, what I'm looking at is I would go from top down, a full audit of our budget and our agencies and our departments, cut out the fat, cut out the waste, try to find that money so we wouldn't affect the taxpayer. It would go into that special education fund. Now, this isn't done on a regular basis? No, no. So it's definitely an idea. It's something that, again, could be expanded yeah. upon. And I'm willing to work with anyone, Republicans, Democrats, whoever wants to you know, do this, because I do truly believe that the number one issue in the state that we have to tackle is property tax reform. That's what's driving people out of here. We're going to lose two congressional districts um, come redistricting, uh, or a potential of two. Um, and when we lose those representatives, the more and more representatives in Congress that we lose, we lose federal funding oh, as well. Of and that's going to hit everybody in their pocketbooks. It's going to hit the municipalities. It's just going to be a nightmare for the well, state. Well, we got the census. Coming, uh, coming yes. like a, a train at us. Yes, so absolutely. So we've got to take care of that. That's, that's coming up soon, and we have to stop the hemorrhaging right now. Uh, so that's why I think this has got to be a priority uh, for us in this legislative session. You, you uh, are also involved, uh, interestingly, in, in election law reform. Yes. And what, what area of it uh, do you see as not being... Well, I'm, I'm on the election law committee, and um, I know that um, the majority is talking about, in both houses, they're talking about early voting, um, initiating that, uh, possibly automatic voter registration. I think um, we need to take a step back when we look at that, because early voting, you know, we haven't gotten the clear proposal yet from the majority on what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. but. The issue that I see, it could be a potential of 12 days of early voting. 
That means you have to open up many different polling stations all around Orange County and Rockland County. Every polling station that you open up, that's going to cost more and more money. Mm -hmm. This is now another unfunded mandate that's going down to the counties, which they can't afford right now. So we don't want to start doing that, I don't think. Um, also, automatic voter registration could cause an issue with potential fraud. So we need to really think that out, you know. And I think the system that we have in place is pretty good. You know, you have one election day okay. uh, that's in the Constitution of the United States, one election day. It's the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November, you know, and that's what needs to be done. We have early early voting anyway with, yes. uh, with absentee voting, for yes, example. Yes, yes. Right? And absentee voting, what you have with that, you, you really need an excuse, like you're going to be out of town or, or you're sick right. or you can't make it to the polls. A uh, proposal that I could support is no fault absentee ballot, which would mean that um, if you want to mail in your ballot, you could still do that and mail it in. You have your vote counted as an absentee. You need no excuse just right? to do There's it. There's no excuse. You don't need an excuse. But the good thing about this, right, is as opposed to early voting, if you do early voting, you're going to the polls, right, and you're casting your vote in October. Right. So, like, let's say something breaks on a candidate. Um, that you don't particularly like, you know, and that breaks now after you voted. You can't change your vote. With a no fault absentee ballot, you can send in your vote for candidate A, but if you change your mind before the polls close on election day, you can actually show up to the polls on election day and vote that can way and then the absentee. absentee and cancel the absentee, exactly. Carl Brabenek, you have got some ingenious ideas going for you. Thank you, uh, we thank you. I want to wish you all the very best. So glad you could stop by today thank as we you. kick off a new session up here in, uh, in Albany. My pleasure, my 98th pleasure. 98th District is where he comes from, and he's got a busy year, as do all our legislators. There's no question about it. And for Meet the Leaders, busy as we are, I'm David Smith.